Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com where you can find real firepower online. Today we're going to continue our discussion of the 45 ACP caliber and see, using FBI standards, how much stopping power this venerable round actually has. Now, in past videos we've done 9, 40, and 380, so I had an idea that maybe later on we would put sort of an aggregate video up showing each caliber's path through the ballistic gel so you can come to your own conclusions. For those of you that aren't real familiar with our setup, we're here at Ghost Town in Findlay, Ohio, our outdoor range, provided to us by our good friends at the Buffalo Trading Company, who have also supplied the guns and the ammunition for today's demonstration. What we have, if we look down range, is some FBI standard caliber testing. We have Ballistic gelatin, ours is 15%, theirs called for 10, with some clothing material, which is t-shirt, fleece, and some denim. We have pinned it, so hopefully we don't have to come and reset the target every time, and we do have a chronograph for those of you that are interested in perhaps a bullet speed at home. We always appreciate the comments we get on the channel, and a lot of people said that they would find some value in using the chronograph. But let me preface that by saying sometimes our chronograph can be a little tricky. It can be a little dicey about whether we get good data or not, or sometimes data not at all. So just bear with us if we don't, we'll do our best in the future. So we have our target placed at 10 feet, properly measured. The first test we're gonna do is with a 230 grain ball round. Very common, very common range round, been around as long as the caliber. So I have three. We're going to try to stay in the top edge of the ballistic gel. After we get that done, we'll switch to some self-defense rounds, also in 230 grain, which we'll talk more about in a second. Before we begin shooting, I'd like to add one more point. In the previous video, we discussed that 185 grain 45 ACP projectile actually does have slightly more energy in foot-pounds than its 230 grain counterpart. One of the reasons why we selected the 230 grain weight was because it could potentially be the worst case, meaning it would be the less effective depending on who you listen to and the ballistics data that you follow and trust. So 230 grain spear lawman, three of them headed downrange, and hopefully our chronograph will agree to cooperate. Try to get more in line with the gel. There's one. Two. And three. Gonna remove the magazine, leave the slide lock to the rear. Let's go down range and see what we got. So, as you can tell, hopefully you can catch this from my head cam. We have a 16 inch piece of gel, followed by another 16 inch piece of gel. And we did get right around 17, maybe to 18 inches of penetration, which is exactly what the FBI standard would consider to be more than passing. Their standard is 12 to 18. For the next part of the demonstration, I've selected Spear Gold Dot 230 grain 45 ACP. This is a very well respected and tested bullet. Law enforcement loves this round and quite frankly, so do I in any caliber. Great, great product. For those of you that are interested, that SIG 1911 is one heck of a pistol. It's the first time I've run the gun today. I've shot numerous 1911 pistols, but not this particular one. Fabulous gun if you're on the fence about a purchase. Really nice handgun. Hopefully we'll keep these below. Remove the mag and leave the slide locked. Let's go down range and see what we got. You can see very good mushrooming from the gold dot, and I would guess your penetration to be somewhere around 13 inches. Sometimes I think that when we look at the results of ballistic testing, People spend, and I certainly have this instinct as well, to too much time on how much penetration there actually is into the block. But one of the things you must consider 
and this is a good illustration of it, hopefully we can pick this up, is this guy right here, this cavitation, and then it comes down to a narrow point. This is actually bad juju for your target. That's shock trauma, that's tissue expanding and then coming back together, and absolutely a positive trait for any self-defense round. Something interesting to note, and we saw this with the 380, it could be, and I'm not saying this as a definitive yes or no, that one of the reasons why the 45 ACP has the reputation that it has is because it doesn't seem to overpenetrate. If you had a round that was in self-defense mode or a hollow point that went all the way through the gel, I would certainly conclude that that might be wasted energy. So don't be disappointed if you're a 45 ACP fan and find that you expected more penetration. The lack of that might actually be a good thing. In this portion of the video, as we've done in past demonstrations, what we would like to do is a mag dump with a 1911 style pistol chambered, of course, in 45 ACP. Now, in previous videos, I referenced the fact that you can get them in much smaller versions, and one would expect that would probably affect most shooters' performance based on the length of the barrel and lightness of the gun, makes it a little bit more recoil sensitive. However, I have a full-size version today because lots of people do actually carry that as an everyday carry gun. So let's try to do a mag dump with the maximum capacity in that particular magazine on our SIG 1911, which is eight rounds. So here we go. Real quick, the ammunition I'm using is from Spear. It's called Spear Lawman, but it is actually a metal jacket round, no self-defense or hollow point, 230 grain. So hopefully we'll run a timer on this and we'll see what we get. And here we go. It's very difficult to beat the pressing action of a 1911 style trigger. Fabulous handgun. As we have done in previous demonstrations, I would like to test the effectiveness of the 45 ACP at 50 meters or 164 feet. It's a challenging shot, but so far we've been successful and I'm hoping to be with this gun, especially the SIG 1911 is a very accurate gun so far. Unlike some demonstrations, I'm going to try and put a jacketed hollow point into the block maybe at the end to see how much that would affect things because as we saw, on the close demonstration at 10 feet, there was a radical difference in penetration between the ball and the self-defense round. So wish me luck and we'll see what we get.
So I'm going to look back towards our firing station right there. And if you can kind of make out that steel triangle, that's where I was standing, 50 meters. Now, for the first time, what's interesting to me about this demonstration is the weight and the speed of the 45 ACP bullet came in to be a much larger factor than it was on the smaller and faster projectiles and calibers that we tested, 9 and 40 and 380 ACP. After multiple attempts, I did manage to put a jacketed hollow point in there. And believe it or not, my finger here, you can kind of see the entry. And our videographer and spotter, Matt, keeps close eyes on these impacts so we can tell them apart. And it came to rest right here. Now, what's significant about that is how in line it actually is with the projectiles that we fired from 10 feet. So quite close, a very, very, very effective bullet and well within FBI standards. Prior to using the jacket at hollow point, I did fire a ball round through the gelatin and it turned it backwards. So that if you can kind of make it out with my head cam here, that's actually the one that got at least as much or more penetration as it did when we fired it from 10 feet. So 45 ACP is an effective bullet. It absolutely is. But significantly, we also saw similar results with other calibers. And I can tell you, it was quite humbling. I know we do have a lot of wind out here today that's blowing this direction, which is the way my hand's going. And I did have to move the sight picture around a ton to get it on target as compared to the other calibers. But some of that is absolutely related to the conditions that we're shooting in. However, I don't know how to quite lay all of this out for you. I'm actually aiming, if you can kind of approximate this, about here off the top of the gelatin to actually get it to impact. And as you can tell, I'm gonna put my head camera down here. As you can see where my finger is pointing, that's actually one of our low strikes through here and here when we were aiming relatively center mass of the block. So 45 ACP is effective, but because of its weight and speed, the shooter does have to be a lot more experienced with how the bullet's gonna behave at this great distance. And let's be honest, with a five inch barrel, it's not going to prove to be one of the things the 45 does well as far as accurate, consistent shooting at that distance with a handgun. But very effective round. Before we conclude our video, I'd like to leave you with some final thoughts. In earlier videos, we talked about the effectiveness of the 45 ACP bullet. And I hope our viewers understand that what I was trying to get across was the fact that it is an effective bullet. I just completely disagree with that it. it's a superior bullet to some other caliber choices out there. And I think our testing today went a long way to validate that point of view. It does pretty much what every other caliber did based on penetration, mushrooming. And the only caveat was I found it a little more challenging to shoot at distance because of its speed and weight. After having said all of that, what I've learned in this little bit of a handgun series we've done is one bullet is not more effective than the other. What makes it effective is your ability to put it on target in a timely fashion. Proficiency is what rules the day, not necessarily the inherent characteristics of a certain caliber. So as we do most of our videos, let's finish up with some dead poultry. Dead chicken.